Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good afternoon dear students today in this particular video uh, we will be discussing about banking uh, we will be discussing in uh, brief what is banking uh, what is the role of banking in the development of a uh, nation and then we will be also discussing in this video that what are the various types of banks so uh, let us start so uh, first of all you should keep in mind uh, that a uh, banking is very necessary a uh, banking uh, you may say is a necessity for the development of a country uh, in fact the development of a nation development of a country is measured by uh, the development of banking institutions in that particular country it is not possible uh, you may say we can't even imagine a development of an economy without the development of banking sector in that particular country so that is the importance of banking we will be discussing that in detail but first of all uh, what is the definition of banking so kindly note that in india a uh, banking is uh, defined under banking regulation act 1949 so as per section 5b of the banking regulation act 1949 banking means the accepting for the purpose of lending or investment of the deposits of money from the public repayable on demand or otherwise and withdrawable by check draft and an order or otherwise so that is the simple definition given by banking regulation act 1949 and one thing more you should keep in mind that in india a banking is regulated by reserve bank of india you should keep in mind that in each and every country there is some central bank that is there in order to control the banking operations like there is some body there is some regulator to regulate real estate to regulate stock market in the same way there is some regulator in order to control the banking operations in a particular country and as far as our country is concerned as far as india is concerned kindly note that we have rbi that is reserve bank of india so having its headquarters at bombay mumbai so that is rbi so in india banking operations are regulated by rbi reserve bank of india and uh, at present uh, mr shakti kanta das he is the worthy governor of the reserve bank of india now uh, let us discuss now let us have a brief look on what is the role of banks in economic development of a country as i have already told you i have just mentioned that the economic development of a country economic development of a nation is not uh, possible uh, that is actually uh, unimaginable without the banks without the regulation without the development of banking sector in that particular nation so we may say that bankers are regarded as public conservators of commercial virtues and i have already told you that a company with an effective banking system uh, that is basically banking system is basically a uh, building some foundation solid foundation you may say Uh, for the economic development of the uh, country uh, kindly imagine any field any activity you will find the role of banking in that particular activity now let us have a look on uh, these various points first is uh, banks assist in capital formation uh, you see uh, i think being students of commerce being students of economics you are aware you know very well what is the use of capital formation as far as the development of a country is concerned uh, now how we can achieve uh, this objective of capital formation so there also uh, banks play an important role a very significant role you may say is played by the banking sector now uh, banks act as creator of money i think you uh, might have uh, heard about the concept of credit creation uh, now what is credit creation uh, basically credit creation is concerned with creation of credit creation of money so uh, basically that is created credit is created by uh, banks and i think in various subjects like in economics you might have gone through this topic in detail now uh, you see in india in india in various other developing countries also we have two sectors we have organized sector same time we have unorganized sector so Uh, basically banks are there in order to act as 
a link between these organized sector and unorganized sectors and one thing more i would like to uh, mention that nowadays in order to include in order to uh, include everybody in the financial system again we need banks we need banks for financial inclusion i think you are aware that what is the importance of financial inclusion uh, various schemes like uh, zero balance account janthan yojana various uh, types of schemes are there in order to have financial inclusion so that everybody is covered under uh, the banking system so in order to do that first of all we need banks only then a person will be able to open an account in a bank now the next part is as i have uh, mentioned in the beginning uh, that in any country each and every country in every country each and every country banking sector is regulated by controlled by a central bank of that particular country and as far as india is concerned the rbi the reserve bank of india is the regulator of banking sector in india so kindly uh, note that monetary policy in order to deal uh, in order to tackle uh, the money supply rbi formulates the monetary policy monetary policy committee of rbi is there so once the monetary policy is formulated uh, then ultimately then ultimately uh, this monetary policy is to be uh, implemented by the banking sector of india and whatever is there whatever has been mentioned whatever has been directed in the monetary policy ultimately uh, that is to be implemented by the banking sector and again it depends upon the development it depends upon the intelligence of the banking sector so that we are able to reap the benefits of improved monetary policy one thing more i would like to mention that various priority lendings are there priority sector lendings are there it may be to underprivileged society it may be to uh, agriculture sector and then uh, banks provide loans and advances to industries apart from loans various types of services are provided by uh, banks to industries uh, be it be it foreign exchange foreign currency or uh, be it uh, you may say uh, import documentation be it issuing of letter of credit various uh, types of services are offered by banks to the industries so in order to develop the agriculture and its importance is very high in a country like india where majority of population is still dependent upon agriculture and then on unorganized sector so now uh, banks are doing their best in order to promote agriculture and industries in india in order to bring us change in order to have a social change a uh, banks acts as catalyst in the Uh, social change so it is again the a uh, very significant role being played by the banking in india and now in order to develop in order to develop the entrepreneurship skills in the youth again banks are providing a number of loans uh, various schemes are there so in that way also banks are contributing to the economic development of the country so by entrepreneurship by developing entrepreneurship we will be the country will be moving from job seeker to job provider uh, it is again the great benefit of banking sector uh, various schemes of government are there various schemes are announced from time to time and basically uh, these are implemented through banking sector to a large extent and now in order to regulate the flow of national savings in order to channelize the uh, money uh, in case some surplus money is there in order to channelize that in order to regulate the flow of national savings again we may say that banking sector play a great role in that field also uh, then in order to mitigate in order to mitigate the impact of trade cycles i think you are aware being students of economics ki what are trade cycles various uh, impacts of trade cycles are there so in order to mitigate uh, the impact of trade cycle a uh, banking sector is very useful and as far as balance of trade as far as balance of payment it is concerned so banks are very helpful in maintaining the positive balance of trade that is uh, banks are helpful banks are uh, um, playing a great role the banks are contributing for the promotion of export and import substitution 
and in this way we are able to we are in a position to control to have a positive balance of trade now let us move to the next part uh, that is uh, what are the functions of commercial banks kindly note that two types of functions are there uh, basically two types of functions uh, we may say primary function primary function that is the core function of any uh, banking institution in any country two types of uh, you may say functions are there primary um, functions are there first one is to accept a deposit and the other one is to grant loans and advances kindly note that money that is surplus money that is uh, not being utilized in a uh, you may say particular way that is lying surplus with somebody or some agency or some so banks are basically accepting deposits from those who are having surplus money and then money is with banks a bank will be providing interest to uh, them who have deposited their money in the in bank banks so bank will be providing interest to them and ultimately that money will not be kept by the banks as such uh, rather that money will be utilized that money will be used by the banks in order to pay in order to grant loans and advances Uh, these loans and advances may be uh, granted to individuals uh, you may say for um, buying for constructing home in order to buy some vehicle uh, for personal purpose personal loans may be given education loan may be given and uh, at the same time these loans may be given to agriculture sector and these loans may be given to big corporate houses industries for the development of industrial uh, sector of india then secondary functions as far as secondary functions are concerned uh, you see primary functions of banks are only to to accept a deposit and to grant loans in addition to that various secondary in addition to that various secondary functions are there uh, for the purpose of convenience we may divide these functions into two parts first may be agency functions and the other part may be general utility functions now let us have a look as far as primary functions are concerned now i am discussing in detail as far as primary functions are concerned banks accept a deposit now what are the various ways to accept a deposit from the public kindly note i think you are aware being students of bcom uh, you might have visited some branch of a bank any bank it may be public private or foreign so you are aware that various types of banks uh, bank accounts are there the saving bank account may be there current account may be there fd may be there properly known as fd basically it is fixed deposit account or rd that is recurring deposit account may be there so by way of these accounts people deposit their money in a banking institution various accounts are there we will be discussing the details of all these in the coming videos but still but at this part you should be aware ki uh, banks are accepting deposits from the public and once the money is there uh, once the money has been channelized surplus money has reached the bank from the public uh, then this money is used by the banking sector in order to lend for advances loans uh, and uh, you should be uh, aware that various things are there it the money may be lent through loans cash credit cc limit it is popularly known as cc limit uh, bank overdraft and discounting of bills may be there we will be discussing in the uh, all these in the coming videos as far as secondary functions are concerned agency functions agency services are there then general utility services are there banks like agency services under agency services uh, banks may collect checks on behalf of their customers uh, some check is there that is deposited into bank bank will be collecting principal agent type relation will be there bank will be collecting the check on behalf of their customers and crediting the amount in their account similarly let us suppose person have made some investment in shares or debentures or some other securities so bank will be collecting bank will be collecting dividend on these shares or interest on these debentures or interest on some other securities 
एंड इन एडिशन टू दैट इन एडिशन टू दैट बैंक में बाय और सेल सिक्योरिटीज ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ फॉर देयर कस्टमर्स एंड एज फार एज जनरल यूटिलिटी सर्विसेज आर कंसर्न बैंक्स में इशू एल सी पॉपुलरली नोन एज एल सीज इट्स फुल फॉर्म इज लेटर ऑफ क्रेडिट बैंकर्स में इशू ट्रेवलर चेक्स वेन वन पर्सन वॉन्ट टू मूव फ्रॉम वन प्लेस टू अनदर और पर्सन वॉन्ट्स टू ट्रेवल फ्रॉम वन कंट्री टू अनदर देन गिफ्ट चेक्स मे बी इशूड देन आई हैव ऑलरेडी टोल्ड यू बैंक आर वेरी हेल्पफुल इन कंट्रोलिंग बैलेंस ऑफ ट्रेड नाउ इन वॉट वे how they will be contributing in this particular area they will be assisting in foreign trade uh, be it import be it export banks will be helpful and uh, in this way the company will be trying their best and government is also providing number of incentives for export promotion and import substitution in this way in order to uh, deal in foreign trade in order to deal effectively in the international trade government will be helpful and the ultimately the banking sector will be helpful in this particular area uh, then various other fa- uh, facilities like locker facility uh, where people may keep their valuables uh, may ke- keep their gold and various other important documents uh, that is also there so these are basically uh, the general utility services uh given by the banks various other things like uh, banks you may instruct a bank and they will be paying your bill your you may say school fee of your ward from your account from time to time uh, rent may be paid rent may be collected and various other things uh, various other payments they will be making as per the standing instructions given by the customers so that is basically covered under secondary functions of a bank now the question arises the main part what are the various types of banks uh, you see number of banks are there commercial banks are there cooperative banks are there even these days small finance banks are there payments banks are there development banks are there so uh, these are basically the types of banks we will be discussing all these banks in brief uh, as far as commercial banking sector is concerned commercial banks are concerned again we have public sector banks we have private sector banks foreign that is you may say international banks regional rural banks and as far as cooperative banks are concerned we may have primary credit societies central cooperative banks state cooperative banks similarly under development banks we have nabard sidbi exim bank and nhb so we will be discussing all of these in brief in this particular video no public sector bank first of all in india i think you might have seen the branch of state bank of india any city where or wherever you are living even in various villages you will find uh, the state bank of india branch so kindly why i am concentrating on sbi state bank of india because the state bank of india and nationalized banks they are together known as public sector banks public sector banks means where a uh, government is having share in uh, these banks you may say these are owned by the government so public sector banks are basically uh, these days you may say public sector banks account for more than 70% of the total banking business in india no doubt it is uh, coming down it is uh, it is showing a falling trend as uh, now more and more business is being captured by private sector banks but still a major chunk A major chunk of banking business in india is still controlled by public sector banks majority of stake in these psbs public sector banks uh, that is by the government uh, that is by the uh, government government uh, uh, has government is having majority of stakes in public sector banks and now basically government is trying to privatize you might have noticed in the uh, budget statement uh, in the previous year also it was uh, Uh, decided to privatize various banks due to various issues so but still majority of stakes in various psbs is held by the government only and as far as volume wise if we discuss state bank of india it is the largest public sector bank in india and as far as the banking sector banking world is concerned in the at international level 
it is amongst the top 50 banks of the world also and it is a great achievement indeed nowadays after the merger of various psbs like very recently you might have noticed that andhra bank and corporation bank they merged into union bank of india similarly uh, dena bank similarly uh, vijay bank uh, they merged with bank of baroda and various other banks various other mergers were there so nowadays only 12 public sector banks are there have a look on the public sector banks in india bank of maharashtra bank of baroda bank of india and canara bank uh, then central bank of india indian overseas bank indian bank punjab and sindh bank punjab national bank it is one of the oldest bank in india state bank of india union bank of india then yuko bank so these are the public sector banks in india uh, various other banks uh, merged with uh, one or uh, other branches like obc or indian bank of commerce used to be there it merged with pnb similarly various subsidiaries of uh, sbi used to be there state bank of patiala state bank of bikaner and jaipur state bank of hyderabad they all merged with sbi and similarly andhra bank corporation bank they merged with union bank of india and various others uh, such mergers were there now private sector banks uh, these are the banks where major stake is or major equity is held by the private shareholders uh, that is it is not by the government i have already told you that in case of public sector banks the majority of stake uh, major stake was held by government but it is not so in case of private banks otherwise it is not so that in order to deal with private sector banks we are having some other regulatory authority it is not so uh, the rules the policies regulations framed by the reserve bank of india are applicable to private sector banks in the same way these are applicable to the public sector banks so these are applicable on private sector banks also major private sector banks in india it is clear on the screen uh, various uh, private sector banks like hdfc bank icici bank j and k bank indusind bank federal bank similarly bandhan bank yes bank so these are the major private sector banks uh, which are operational in india now foreign banks you may say you may also uh, term them as international banks now foreign bank it is the one that has a, its headquarters in a country outside india that is in, in a foreign country uh, but these banks are operating in our country these are operating in india as a private entity again the rules regulations of the rbi these will be applicable to the foreign banks but in addition to that these banks are under an obligation to follow the rules and regulations of their home country also so it should be kept in mind uh, what are the major foreign banks operating in india you may say city bank hsbc that is that is hong kong and shanghai banking corporation standard chartered bank royal bank of scotland barclays bank uh, these are basically foreign banks which are operating in india now regional rural banks kindly note that regional rural banks popularly known as rrbs these are also scheduled commercial banks and the purpose of their formulation purpose of their establishment is to provide credit to weaker sections of the society particularly you may say to uh, the workers working in agriculture sector marginal farmers and small enterprises and these uh, rrbs operate at as their name signifies regional rural banks uh, they are operating at a regional level in different states of india and uh, uh, but it is not so that they they are not able to open branch in urban area they may open their branch in selected urban areas also and then uh, they provide banking services financial services to the rural area and the semi urban areas It, these are very useful uh, as i have already told you in the beginning of the chapter beginning of the video uh, that uh, that financial inclusion is there 
a uh, government is trying to uh, include everybody uh, within the four walls of financial system of the country uh, let us suppose in order to pay wages in order to disburse the wages to workers uh, working under you may say narega we were saying mahatma gandhi narega scheme manrega scheme uh, then uh, they will be having their account and it will become very easy to transfer the money in their account and uh, some sort of uh, you, you may say some sort of uh, uh, dishonesty some sort of uh, negligence we may say uh, that we are not paying the full amount to the worker it will not be there as no hard cash will be given it will be credited to the account of the beneficiary so similarly in order to distribute pensions it may be used and uh, various other types of facility may also be offered by the rrbs uh, then cooperative banks are there cooperative banks are basically uh, run through elected managing committee and these are registered under cooperative societies act 1912 and uh, the basic idea is to operate in a cooperative way so no profit no loss base may be there and these are also there in order to uh, help agriculture small business small industry and uh, entrepreneur and in urban area they may also be work in rural area uh, they are basically helping farmers they are uh, helping them in the milk production livestock keeping in that way now their types primary credit societies are there at the lower level at the basic level at the village or town level uh, we have primary credit societies providing service to a particular locality and their operations are uh, restricted to a small area so that everybody is aware members are knowing each other and uh, and the activities of uh, they are able to watch their activities in order to reduce the chances of frauds then central cooperative banks here these banks are operating at a district level a district level and you may have these may be having some of the primary credit societies which i have already discussed just discussed belonging to the same districts they may be their member they may be the member of central cooperative banks they these central cooperative bank the main point is that they will be providing loans to their members that is primary credit societies and they will be uh, acting as they will be acting as a link a bit of primary credit society and the state cooperative banks so they will be acting as the link particular link between these two at the lower level we will be having at the primary level at the village level we are having primary cooperative society and at the higher level we will be having state cooperative banks so in between central cooperative banks at state level sorry at the district level they will be uh, operating and they will be acting as a link between Uh, these two now state cooperative bank highest level of cooperative bank is the state cooperative bank it is in all the states of india and again their purpose is to mobilize funds and to provide funds to the needy and uh, they will be providing the finance will be ultimately the money will be uh, reaching the borrowers from them from state cooperative banks through central cooperative banks and ultimately the money will be reaching the primary credit societies as i have already told you that central cooperative banks are acting as a link between these two now small finance bank it is not very old and these are also licensed under section 22 of the uh, banking regulation act 1949 and again they are governed by the uh, rbi rbi is the regulator of small banks also and fema is also applicable what is the main aim of small finance bank as i have told you these times in this video only that we aim at the government wants financial inclusion government wants that each and every section of the society everybody everybody is covered by the banking system so in order to have financial inclusion in order to include the society those sections of the society uh, that are not served by other banks uh, due to various reasons due to various uh, uh, you may say issues so these are served by small finance banks and 
who are their main customers uh, their main customers are micro industries small farmers marginal farmers unorganized sector and small business units so they are basically served by these small finance bank and the major small finance banks in india operating these days are au small finance bank capital small finance bank ujjivan small finance bank janalakshmi small finance bank similarly utkarsh small finance bank is there surodaya small finance bank is there fincare small finance bank is there esaf small finance bank is there equitas small finance bank is also there so it should be kept in mind now payment banks again it is a new model as far as indian banking industry is concerned it is again not very old again it is basically regulated by rbi and it was basically conceptualized by rbi these banks these payment banks are allowed to accept a restricted deposit that is rupees 1 lakh per customer and uh, they offer various services like atm cards debit cards net banking mobile banking and these are very tax savvy major payment banks in india airtel payment bank indian post payment bank system uh, then paytm jio payments nsdl payments banks so these are there i think you might have used one or more of these in your uh, day to day life then nabard nabard basically nabard stands for national bank for agricultural and rural development it was established in 1982 earlier its initial capital was rupees 100 crore now it is totally owned by a government of india its what is its role what is its role as it is significant as it is clearly you may say depicted by its name itself that it basically Uh, caters to the needs of agriculture sector and rural development so uh, for agriculture development and rural development nabard is there it is basically using basically financing directly indirectly agriculture rural development uh, and various other roles like supervisory roles are also played by the nabard and as far as financial inclusion is concerned again nabard is making sincere efforts sincere efforts are being made cbs core banking solution to cooperative banks is uh, being uh, provided as far as its supervisory role is concerned so as per the provisions of banking regulation act 1949 nabard is empowered to conduct inspections of various state cooperative banks central cooperative banks and regional rural banks so and at the same time they are providing direct finance to food parks food processing units to warehouses cold storage cold chain infrastructure uh, then they provide credit facility to marketing federations rural infrastructure development fund refinance assistance is given to various cooperative banks Uh, then various producer organizations are being served similarly in providing finance to primary agriculture cooperative societies uh, they are doing their best they are doing their best and they are uh, even doing short term and long term refinancing of agriculture loans so they are playing a great role then sidbi is there uh, what is sidbi what is the full form of sidbi it is small industries development bank of india as nabard is there for agriculture and rural development sidbi is there to serve the needs of small industries small industries to serve the financial needs of small industries it was established in 1990 by an act of parliament and it was the wholly owned subsidiary of idbi so its main purpose was to promote to finance the development of small scale industries in india and uh, it also carries out the coordinating functions of institutions which are engaged in this type of activities or uh, then national housing bank nhb it is popularly known as nhb it was established on 9th of july 1988 under the nhb act 1987 nhb basically uh, deals with to promote housing finance at local level at regional level 
and uh, to provide financing to provide support to institutions uh, which are operating in this part uh, after that we are having exim bank now what is exim bank uh, what is exim ex stands for export and im stands for import so it is basically export import bank uh, set up in 1982 kindly note that it is there particularly there to serve the needs of exporters and importers so basically its role is uh, great as far as foreign trade of a country is concerned and kindly note one thing that it is the premier export house premier export finance institution of the country and uh, uh, regarding financing export regarding financing import of goods so ultimately uh, with the promotion of uh, export with the uh, you may say export promotion import substitution or even for imports of uh, necessary items even uh, those can't be substituted exim bank is there to, to assist and in this way uh, it is able to we are in a position to promote the foreign trade of our country and by promoting export and by reducing import to some extent uh, we are able to have balance of trade balance of payment positive things may occur and then uh, in order to import technology for various export product development export production export marketing pre shipment post shipment overseas investments exim bank is always there to help the uh, industry so uh, with this we have completed the first uh, module first video uh, that was regarding banking a brief introduction uh, then we had discussed various functions uh, and uh, what are the various types of banks okay then thank you dear students